All right, before we get into writing an actual Java program, let's take a look at a couple of existing programs that I downloaded and set up from uh, free source websites, and you'll get a closer look at what Java can do uh, on the more finished side before we create our own programs and run those. So let me bring up, first of all, our text editor, and we'll take a look at where this Java code is coming from. <clears throat> Our first program is going to be called Converter I.O. And it's going to be a program that can run a converter to convert distances from metric to the English measuring system. So let's take a look at what this program does on the finished side first. So if I go to my command prompt and I say that I want to run a Java program, and this Java program is called Converter I.O., and I hit enter, it runs the program and it gives us and it presents us with an output statement. This output statement prompts us to enter more data for the conversion. So it says, what would you like to convert? And then it gives us a choice, uh, miles, kilometers, meters, and so forth. And then it also gives us a, ch a choice if we want to exit the program. Now let's say that I want to convert miles. So I enter one, I enter, uh, enter one, hit enter. Now it asks us, Enter the values for miles. Okay, let's keep it simple to start out with here. I just want to convert one mile. I hit return. Now notice here, it outputs the conversions for all of the distances and all of the units that we have programmed in. So one mile is 1.6 approximately kilometers. And it gives us that same distance in meters, feet, inches, and centimeters. All right, so now it prompts us again if we want to enter our choice and convert something else. Let's say that I want to convert meters this time. So I enter three, hit enter. And then I uh, enter the value of meters. Let's say I want to convert 500 meters. If I hit enter, it gives us the distances there. Distance in miles, kilometers, feet, and inches. Let's try this one more time. Let's say that I want to convert number four for feet. What about 600 feet? How long is that in meters? I hit enter and it gives us the distance. That would be five, 600 uh, feet would be approximately 182 meters. So you can see the conversion is working and now if I want to exit, I enter seven and hit return and then it says thank you for using this program and we're done. If I, in my command prompt, type clear, we clear the screen and now we can take a look at the code that is behind this program running it all. All right, in this code. Now this might seem complicated to you at first, and it is, but as we go through our lessons in Java, you're going to understand what a lot of these command statements mean. You can see that all of the code controls the classes, controls the distances, controls the output statements about what it's going to prompt the user for, controls catch-all statements that identify invalid entries to prompt the user to try again. And then it can also do math. Notice how it says we want to multiply the miles distance by certain conversion numbers and so forth. So as we look through this code, you can see how the program is handling the data entry, the conversion, and then the output that tells the user what the conversion is. And if the user says that they want to exit the program, it prompts the user just to say, thank you for using the program. And then we get down to the bottom, that's it at the end. All right, so that's our first example of a more advanced Java program. Let's take a look at one more before we get into simpler things and break it down so that we can start from the beginning. In this program, this Java program is going to calculate some grades for us for, for a typical school class. All right, so if we enter grades, such as a student's homework grade, the grade on the midterm and the grade on the finals exam, and we set up a computation program that will weight those things each to 30% for the prelims or the homework and 30% for the midterm and 40% for the final, it should calculate those and add them together and then give us that overall grade. 
Okay, if I go back to our command prompt here, I want to run this grade program. So I say Java grade, hit enter. It runs our grading system and it first asks us for the homework grade. All right, let's say that we got 95 on our homework. If we say we got an 80 on our midterm and we got an 85 on our finals, it shows us that the average grade is 87 and that that student passed. Let's try another one. Let's say that this student didn't do so well. Let's say that they got a 60 on their homework. They got a 55 on the midterm and a 50 on the final. Notice that it says average grade is 55 and the status is failed. So we've set this program up so that it will pass fail at 60%. So 60% and higher is passing, 60% or lower or 59% or lower is failing. All right, and we'll take a look at how it handles that in the code after we run one, one more example here. Let's say that I want to run another example and let's say this time we do much better. A great student gets 100 on the homework, 100 on the midterm, and 100 on the final. And the average is 100 and that is a pass. All right, so then we say we want to exit the program. And I will clear this screen. And now let's take a look at the code so that we can see how this program is handling this computation. All right, first of all, we've already looked at how the user is prompted to enter all the grades. But now let's take a look at some simple if statements. We're going to learn all about if statements in a later lesson. But right now it says, if the grade is less than 60, if the grade is greater than or equal to 60, and the grade is less than or equal to 100, then the student is going to pass. If the grade was less than 60, it will output the statement that the student has failed. And also, if the grade happens to be through user error, bad data entry, we're entering data numbers greater than 100. If the grade gets calculated at greater than 100, then we know that there's a mistake, so it prompts the user to say, over the maximum grade range, the grade range should only be from 50 to 100. Then it'll prompt the user to enter either another set of grades or to exit. And then that's the end of the program. So let's see what happens if we do enter grades that go out of bounds. If we say Java grade, if we say the homework grade is 110, midterm grade is 120, and the finals grade is 130, it does prompt us that the average is too high and that's over the maximum grade grade range. So we should bring it all back down to numbers that are within the prescribed parameters. And then it gives us the average and we're safe. All right, so let me exit out of there. We will clear. And let's go to our next examples. And in these next examples, we're going to start from scratch. So those programs that I just showed you are more advanced. They were pre-written. They were downloaded from free, uh, free source websites that offer Java programs. And to begin, we're going to start from scratch here. So we're going to start very simply so you can understand about how basic Java programs are created. All right, so the first thing that we need to understand is how to open up and write a beginning Java program. And we do that by first declaring a public class. All right, so in the first statement you can see here, I say public class, we'll call this my first Java. Then we have the public static void main statement. We're going to learn a lot about that today because all programs, all Java programs need that in their somewhere, either at the beginning, middle, or end, that, that string of commands has got to be there. Now, the other thing that you need to make sure of is that all Java classes, as you create these programs, and the methods that prescribe the tasks, they have to begin and end with braces. So that's why when we set up this first class here, we have the open brace, or the curly Q bracket. When we have the public static void main statement, then we have the open brace there. And then later on, as we end the program, it, these braces sort of bookend each other. So we're going to have a close brace towards the end to close off the main method. 
and we'll have a close brace to close off the original public class. Ne next time we look at code, I'll show you an example of that.